With this video you will learn to set up your FortiGate to allow secure access to your networks from remote locations. This is done using a virtual private network, or VPN. The type of VPN is Internet Protocol Security, commonly called IPsec. FortiClient makes configuring and managing IPsec VPNs a much easier process. In this video, we will set up a secure remote access to a work network. Let's look at our example network topology. Here is your work network. It is protected by your FortiGate, which is connected to the Internet. On the other side of this is a remote user with FortiClient. In our configuration, this user will connect through a VPN tunnel to your FortiGate which will allow access into the work network. This requires configuration of the FortiGate and then the FortiClient. We will add addresses for local LAN and remote FortiClient hosts, create remote users and add them to user groups, configure FortiClient IPsec VPN tunnel, create firewall policies for FortiClient VPN traffic, and the last step, setting up FortiClient. Let's start configuring your FortiGate. Access the web-based interface and enter your username and password. Click Login. We need to declare the addresses that the remote user will be accessing over the VPN. Browse to Firewall Objects and then Addresses from the left menu. Click Create New and enter the name of the first subnet we'll be using. Enter the subnet IP and click OK. Now create addresses for your other subnets. Choose Groups under the Firewall Objects Address section and click Create New. Then choose a name. Pick each of the addresses you just created and move them into the list. Then click OK. Now we need to declare the IP range that 40 clients will be assigned when they connect. Go back to Firewall Objects, Addresses, and create a new IP range that will be assigned to remote users of the network. Click OK. Next, we set up a user account, as individuals need unique credentials to access the VPN. Navigate to User and Create New. Add a username and password. Click OK. To make things more simple to administer, we give VPN permissions to groups rather than individuals. So navigate to User Groups and Create New. Give this a name, and then add your users. Click OK. Back in User Groups, you will see the new group and the members within added beneath the firewall heading. Instead of creating each user ad hoc, we can also use a remote server like LDAP or Active Directory. This is a server that companies commonly use to control user accounts and passwords. We set one up earlier. All we need to do is configure the FortiGate unit to use it for authentication. Click Remote, then LDAP, and Create New. Enter a name for your own reference, then the details of your server. Click Test, and we have confirmation that our settings are correct. Click OK to add this server. Now go back to User Group. Reveal our current groups beneath Firewall. Double-click the item FTC Users that we just created. Under Remote Authentication Servers, click Add. Select the LDAP server from the list of Remote Authentication Servers and click OK. 
we now see in the listing that Jack and all of the people on our LDAP server have credentials to the VPN. With all the groundwork completed, we can create our VPN. Choose VPN, then IPsec Auto Key, IKE, and then Create 40 Client VPN. We will add a short but descriptive name. Now choose the outgoing interface, which is WAN 1, as remote users will be accessing this as their gateway to the network. Add a pre-shared key. This is a second password that, unlike the user credentials, is common to all of your users. This is an additional level of security. Then select the group of users we recently created. The IP range is the same as the one we created for the 40 clients to be assigned. Split tunnel is already enabled. This means that connected clients can continue to use local connections, like the internet, unless they are specifically attempting to access work networks. Now set the accessible networks as work networks. Click OK. The VPN is now created. Our setup defines users, accessible networks, and the IP range that can be used to connect to it. But as it stands, our firewall does not know to allow these communications. Go to Policy, Create New, and choose our VPN as the source. Source address is FTC Hosts. Set interface as internal, destination address as work networks, service is any, and action is accept. For this example, we will log allowed traffic, enable NAT, and turn on the default UTM antivirus functions. Click OK to create the policy. Let's double check our policy. Click the top listing, and we can see the rule we just established. We will now configure 40 client, but before we do, let's review our topology. A remote client is on the right, and right now it only has an internet connection. We need to establish the VPN tunnel to the 40 gate that will allow it to connect to the work network. To do this, we must use the WAN1 IP address 17.1.22.1. As a remote gateway. Our next step is to configure the client and test that the connections to the work network are being made correctly. In this example, we are using a computer from outside the office. In Windows, we can check on the current network status using some command line tools. Open the command prompt and type ipconfig. We see all the current network adapters. This is all default as we do not have the VPN set up yet. When we type route print, we see a list of the possible connections. If we ping a computer in our work network, a request will time out since our work private network is not exposed to the internet. This computer already has 40 client installed. You can grab a copy from 40client.com or off the CD provided with your 40 gate. Launch 40 client and click remote access. Configure VPN, then add a connection name. Remote gateway is the address of your 40 gate as seen by the internet. Now add the pre-shared key and click OK. Until now, all the information we have added will be the same for any of your VPN users. Now we enter the account-specific username and password, and click Connect. Our connection is made. To test this, we will use the command line again, and run ipconfig. You can see that a new Ethernet adapter connection is created for the VPN tunnel traffic.
In the same way, when we hit Route Print, there are now route entries for the split tunnel. Traffic to these destinations will go over the tunnel. When we ping our work network, we get a response indicating that the tunnel is up and we can securely communicate with those computers. Further evidence of the VPN setup can be found in the FortiGate. Log into the FortiGate and open VPN, then Monitor, IPsec Monitor. This will show all the currently established VPN connections. Now that setup is complete, users can connect to the secure VPN from remote locations, allowing them access to resources on the work network. Thanks for watching.